All right. Well, welcome everybody uh, to our first uh, virtual Inside the Nest uh, program. Um, All right. Well, welcome everybody uh, to our first uh, virtual Inside the Nest uh, program. Um, All right. Well, welcome everybody uh, to our. So I'm going to start off here by. Inside um, the Nest. Uh, introducing myself. Uh, my name is Brett Peters, and I am the assistant director of the Notre Dame Link Experimental Ecosystem Facility. Um, and I'm joined by Evie Kirkwood. I'll let Evie introduce herself. I'm the assistant director of the Notre Dame Link Experimental Ecosystem Facility. Introducing myself. Hi, Evie. Hi, I'm 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 Evie
um, uh, in, the, in, the, in the 1980s, they uh, brought eagles from outside Indiana and did a process called hacking, where they actually raised the eagles um, and feed them uh, with little uh, 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 eagle uh, puppet heads, um, and, and and so and, and they do not know they are being raised by humans, so they don't um, imprint on humans as being um, uh, their food source. Um, and then they're released. Um, and in 1991, they uh, actually had their first successful nesting uh, with these introduced uh, eagles. Um, so that was really the first sign of success that eagles were going to make a comeback here in Indiana. Now, uh, before 1985, when we had that reintroduction, eagles had not nested in Indiana since the late 19, uh, 1890s. Um, uh, basically, at that time, uh, uh, eagles were seen as predators um, for livestock and hunted. Also, we had a lot of uh, uh, environmental degradation going in the form of clear cutting that really limited uh, the eagles' uh, habitat. Uh, but since those reintroduction programs, uh, as this graph here shows, um, uh, eagles have been uh, increasing quite dramatically uh, in Indiana uh, with over 68 nests in 2007 and now over 300 known nests today. And while the eagles are not still protected under the Endangered Species Act uh, because they uh, moved uh, to threatened and then delisted in 2007, they are still protected by several other uh, 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 laws, um, including the Migratory Bird Act, the Lacey Act, um, and also the Bald and Gold Eagle, Eagle Protection Act, which specifically protects bald and gold, uh, and gold eagles. Um, and it's also, um, the if you go out to ND Leaf, you'll see signs uh, keeping people back um, from the nests. And that is part of that law um, and the U.S. Fish and Wildlife guidance that we uh, keep uh, mi minimum act, uh, minimal activity within 330 feet of, of the nest. So that brings me to ND Leaf, where the bald eagle's um, uh, nest is located. Uh, ND Leaf is a, uh, an ecological research uh, uh, facility uh, located at St. Patrick's County Park in South Bend, Indiana. And um, if you see these two watersheds here, um, those are two of our replicated watersheds where we conduct uh, scientific experiments. This large pond here is a reservoir that feeds the streams, ponds, and wetlands. And the eagle nest is just outside the picture, kind of right in line with this uh, furthest uh, east pond. Now, our first sign of the eagles was kind of funny. Um, it, it came in October of 2014 as the Morrison Family Education and Outreach Pavilion was being constructed. And um, the construction crew that was there um, uh, uh, told me that, hey, you know you have bald eagles nesting here? And we thought, no, that's a red-tailed hawk nest. Because prior to uh, 2014, there was a red-tailed hawk nest in that location. Um, so we kind of blew it off that these guys didn't know what they were talking about. Well, it turned out they did. And uh, the bald eagles had actually moved in and taken over the red tailed hawk nest, which is not uncommon. So this is a picture from February of 2015. You can see the bald eagle nest uh, just beyond the Morrison Family Pavilion there. Um, and at that point, it's rather small. It's grown quite a bit since then. So in 2015, the first year that the eagles were there, uh, we weren't uh, uh, sure if they would actually successfully have uh, uh, hatch eaglets because that's not always the case um, for the first couple of years. Um, but we were very excited uh, when we saw that first little eaglet poking its head over the top of the nest uh, that you can see here. So in 2015, uh, uh, this nest and then also another bald eagle nest at Potato Creek State Park just south of here were actually the first documented uh, uh, successful nests in St. Joseph history since uh, that, that, that 1890 uh, time frame. So that was just really, really exciting. We had the nice camera that we could see um, the eagles from uh, uh, near the pavilion, uh, but we really couldn't get a good glimpse at the eagles until they peeked their head over the top. Um, at that point, the leaves were often obstructing the view. So um, 
through 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 some very generous don donations, um, we were able to install a camera above the nest, um, and that's what you're actually seeing right here. Um, we used a high lift bucket truck and um, an arborist who had uh, experience with raptors uh, to actually go the extra distance up into the nest because the truck bucket couldn't quite get up there. Um, and we installed a high definition camera that pans 360 degrees um, and um, uh, uh, has been streaming ev ever since. So we've been very lucky to have um, a very successful uh, uh, history at ND Leaf in regards to the bald eagles. Um, in 2015, we hatched one, uh, one, uh, uh, one e eaglet, 2016 one, 2017 we had two. Um, then we really started getting more information about hatch dates and whatnot in 2018 when we installed that live cam. Um, and in 2018 we had two, and then the last two years we've had three. And in fact, the final eaglet uh, for this year just made its way out of the nest uh, this morning. And actually this background that you see behind me right now is showing a clip uh, from the nest this morning. So with that, I am going to uh, give it over to Evie Kirkwood, who is going to um, uh, talk a little bit more about the bald eagle biology. Great, thank you so much, Brett. Great to be here. And yes, how exciting that we timed this on the day that the last chick actually emerged from its egg. So I think Brett, you said it emerged, it, it left the nest, but it actually hatched out of its egg. So one of the great things about bald eagles is that the pairs do form long-term bonds and they will actually reuse the same nest year after year. It's really the female that has a fidelity to the nest and she'll bring her mate back every season when she's getting ready to nest. Both adults help to build the nest and they work on that actually in fall here at St. Patrick's County Park. We'll start to see them in December start to bring sticks back to the nest and uh, begin to tidy up the site. The nest is really, really big, eight feet wide by three feet deep. So that makes it hard without that camera to actually see into the nest. We're glad we have that camera, courtesy of Notre Dame Environmental Change Initiative. Next slide. When the adults are doing their incubation, they actually share the duties. They will lay their eggs in late February and early March, and they're about the size of a tennis ball or so, and they work to keep those eggs warm enough so that we have, uh, they have a warmer temperature than the ambient air temperature. It takes them about 35 days to hatch those eggs, and when the hatching process begins, the little chick from inside has a little tooth on the top of its bill called an egg tooth. They will scrape the inside of the shell to get what's called a little pip hole to bring in oxygen into the egg. And that's when we know that the hatching process is going to begin. Usually 24 hours after a pip hole is seen in the egg, then we know that there will be a little chick, hopefully uh, within about 24 hours. As an eaglet, the big job is eat and sleep. And the adults will bring food in and tear off little pieces of the prey. And if you've been watching the live eagle cam, you've probably seen many different kinds of food. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. But the adults will pull off little bits of, bits of the prey and literally place it in the mouth or near the mouth of the chicks. When they're first hatched, you probably have seen their white fluffy little fuzzballs. Eventually they will transition into their brown, what I call teenager feathers. They don't fly until they're about 75 year or 75 days old. So they'll begin as the months go on to kind of flap their wings after they get their brown flight feathers. Takes them a little while to build up some muscle strength. 
And by late summer, then they are permanently departing from the nest. Their diet, as we mentioned, is very varied, I guess, is what you could say. They eat all kinds of fish. That's a primary food source. But there's also been muskrat and raccoon and turtles and snakes and birds and ducks. All of those actually show up in the nest that the adults bring in. Usually they kind of drop it there in the nest and then who's ever sitting incubating or nearby the chicks as they get a little bit older will feed them. Eventually as the chicks build up strength, they will be able to walk over to the prey and actually grab bits themselves. But, but for quite a while, the adults are placing the, the food into their mouth. Um, Eagle is a very, very wonderful hunter in terms of the skills and the adaptations that it has. They have great eyesight. You've probably heard that phrase, uh, eyes, eyes of an eagle. That's because they can see anywhere from a mile and a half to two miles away underwater. That makes them great fishers, which is one of their uh, primary uh, hunting strategies. And because they are fast and strong flyers, they can fly 40 miles an hour just in a normal flight. But when they are zooming down into the water, they can reach speeds of 100 miles an hour. Very, very strong flyers. It's the female who's the larger of the two. She's the one that has to carry the eggs essentially in her body. So that needs to have a big, strong, stout, broad chest. Uh, so she's larger. It's, otherwise, it's pretty hard to tell the two of them apart unless they're sitting next to each other. Their wingspans are just a little bit different. The male ranges six to seven feet, but the female, again, is larger. So her wingspan can be up to seven and a half feet, which if you look at that great graphic, that's about the width of the nest. So it gives you an idea of how big that nest is and how big these birds are. So now we're gonna open up for questions and it looks like Brett, we've got a few questions that have come in already. You wanna take that first one? Yes, um, would be happy to. Um, so our first question is, do our eagles stay here in the winter or do they migrate? Um, that is a great question. Um, eagles are kind of unique um, in the sense that some do migrate and some don't. So eagles will only migrate as far as they need to, to be able to find prey. Um, and as Evie mentioned, one of the pri uh, 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 prime prey items for eagles is fish. So what we find is that eagles will generally migrate far enough south uh, to find open water to do their fishing. And um, uh, so uh, uh, populations north of here often do migrate in the winter. What we have seen at ND Leaf is that uh, most likely the proximity to the St. Joseph River, which uh, is what we believe is where the eagles are doing the most of their hunting, um, it stays ice-free um, uh, uh, the majority of winters. Um, and so the eagles stick around and uh, they don't use the nest uh, like they do this time of year because they're not rearing young, but we will see them from time to time uh, uh, around St. Patrick's County Park and uh, around ND Leaf. So Brett, it looks like we have another question that's come in. Do they have names? So not sure if the question refers to the adults or the chicks, but either way, we've had lots of discussions about this. And we've actually opted not to name either the adults or the chicks. First of all, there's really no way to tell if the same adult birds, we're assuming they are, but if it's the same ones coming back and the chicks, uh, you know, they, they fledge off and off they go. So because here at St. Patrick's County Park and St. Joseph County Parks, we like to make sure that people realize these are wild animals. We actually have opted not to give them names. Okay, uh, we got another question here. Um, 
do they take only live prey or will they eat carrion? Um, another great question. And um, for those who don't know, carrion means um, uh, previously dead animals. Um, so a lot of times in urban, suburban settings like that, like this, that might be roadkill. Um, and they do, uh, they're opportunistic. And uh, while we do see them bringing in lots of fish, um, which uh, we assume are probably being caught live, uh, we have witnessed uh, 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 some items be brought in that we are fairly certain were uh, carrion or, or, or previously killed. Most notably last year, actually two, uh, two separate instances, um, basically the head and uh, front shoulder, front legs of uh, a small deer were brought into the nest. Um, you know, most likely a fawn uh, or, or, or this year's, um, but it appeared that that had already been hit and killed and um, uh, broken apart enough that they could manage to bring it to bring it up. We've also seen, seen them bring in raccoons. Um, again, that appeared to be uh, 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 previously killed. So I'll take the next question. Somebody's asked if banding is an option and do we have any plans to do that? So you need a licensed bander to do that. The Indiana Department of Natural Resources does do some limited banding for raptors such as bald eagles, although they've really tapered that off as the population here in Indiana of bald eagles has expanded. So at this time, we don't have any plans primarily because the Indiana Department of Natural Resources only has limited resources to get a bander around through the state. So we're, we're actually, uh, we don't have that option actually at this time. Great question though. Um, here's one, um, how high up in the nest is the tree? And I'll take that one since I was once up in the tree right next to the nest uh, when we were installing that Eagle Camp. Um, it's approximately 60 feet up in the air. Um, and let me tell you, um, that's a ways up there. I didn't quite realize how high it was until I started going up in that bucket truck and uh, there was no turning back at that point. Uh, so uh, uh, they have a great view from up there. and. Uh, uh, it's in a sycamore tree. Um, that's another interesting fact. And you can actually see that, well, right here, um, it's kind of got this, this this classic bark of, of a sycamore. Uh, yeah, it's a great here's question. A, here's a couple of questions that I can kind of tie together. Uh, how old are the adults? Well, we don't know because they're not banded, so we're not sure. Um, but we do know that uh, a adult can have about, uh, a maximum of three eggs. So that's the maximum that they can ever have. And in the first year, our, our eagles actually fledged one. So it's usually a range of one to three. An adult can actually live to 20 or 25 years. But interestingly, as in most cases with wildlife, the adults do not, uh, or, or the young actually don't survive uh, in a high percentage up through their about their fifth year. So many, many young chicks die, many adolescents die before they actually reach adulthood. So there's a really high mortality rate with most wild animals. And the eaglets, when they fledge, we don't actually know where they go, but they do disperse. They go out and find their own territory. They start to seek out a mate when they get to be about four years old. They are not fully mature uh, until four or five years old. And that's, that's when they actually, they get their white head and white tail. Um, we have a question about what kind of prey uh, we've seen be brought in into the nest. And that's one of my favorite topics because uh, 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 I, I've studied a lot uh, aquatic ecology and fish, and um, that's one of the main prey items. So I really enjoy uh, identifying those fish. And uh, we've actually had an undergraduate student from Notre Dame uh, uh, working on a project um, that uh, uh, to to get to quantify uh, how many fish are getting brought in and the species of those fish. Um, and if you've wondered why the camera moves around about every half hour. Um, it's because it's being programmed, the camera's programmed to take photos and upload those photos 
uh, to cloud storage uh, where we can analyze them further. Um, so the, the, the biggest thing that we see is fish. And we've been amazed to, to see um, at least 21 different species of fish brought into the nest. So they do a great job just getting a little bit of everything from the St. Joseph River. Um, also, um, uh, which is, was kind of surprising to me at least, was the number of birds, particularly last year, that were brought into the nest. Uh, we saw several wood ducks as well as a blue heron get brought into the nest. Um, so as Evie mentioned earlier, they have a very diet. Um, and so it's especially this time of year because they're bringing a lot of food in and the food sticks around for a while for you to check it out. Um, later on in the summer, when those eaglets get big and really hungry, they gobble down a fish in a couple minutes. Sometimes you don't even get a chance to see what it is because they eat it so fast. Right. Let's see, did we miss any questions here, Brett? We're looking at the, the chat list as it comes up. Um, there's a question about when the eagles are laying eggs, do they lay eggs one at a time or multiple eggs at a time? Uh, adult bird is only able to produce an egg once every few days. It takes a lot of energy to actually make that egg inside their body. So the eggs are spaced out in terms of their laying timing. The first egg this year, for example, I think Brett was February, was that February 27th? And then the last uh, egg was in early March, like March 5th or so. So yeah, it's spaced, exactly. spaced out. Yeah, but one of the really neat things about that and something that kind of scared me the first year <laughs> was that that first egg um, was, laid um about uh uh you know what about seven days er earlier than the last egg and the eagles don't want those eggs to hatch seven days apart because um even a couple days apart like you're seeing right now on the eagle cam that little advantage that the first one has it can it eats first and then as the next one's hatch it already has an advantage and is able to get the food to get the most food and it grows bigger and is that it's a positive feedback and it just gets this uh, uh, advantage over the siblings. So the eagles really want to try to ha get the hatch to uh, uh, be as synchronized as possible to maximize the survival of all three eaglets. So what they do is something called delayed incubation. And for the first egg, what you'll notice is even on a sub-zero or sub-freezing day, they'll stop incubating the, the egg for minutes or one time it was over an hour and i was just like that egg has got to be a goner um but they know what they're doing i have learned to not stress about that because i they know better than i do and um it's amazing uh uh how even though the eggs are laid several days apart they hatch very close together and uh again give the highest uh, survival possibility for for all those chicks so that's a really cool adaptation so we probably have a little more time for a few more questions. Here's a fun one. I want to take this one, Brett. Why do the eagles wiggle in the nest? So if you watch them when they settle down, sometimes they, they switch position, but when the adult settles down on the eggs or even the chicks when they're really small, the adult will grab some of the fiber around close to their body with their bill and then you'll see them do this little wiggle as they settle down onto the eggs. The reason for that is on the breast of an adult bird that's incubating, there is a brood patch. And in that area of their skin, the capillaries or all those blood vessels during incubation swell up and are able to carry lots of heat and warmth that helps keep either first the eggs or then the chicks warm. So in order to kind of spread out their over feathers that you see, they wiggle around on the eggs or the chicks and that spreads out those feathers so they can make direct contact with the brood patch and the eggs or the chicks, keep them warm. Okay, I see a, a camera question here. Um, and that is, is it possible to turn on the sound for the camera? Um, unfortunately, that camera does not have sound capabilities. Um, 
and I know I've heard lots of people tell me they would love to hear that squawking. Um, <laughs> for those of you who have never heard an eagle uh, 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 call, it's uh, it's something to be heard. It's uh, uh, a very interesting call. Uh, and uh, that, so we don't have sound. Um, there's currently no plans to put sound or infrared cameras at night. Um, I know that some of the other Eagle cams have those as well. Um, for us, it's very hard. Um, like I mentioned, our, the, the Eagles don't, don't migrate in our area. And so there's very limited time for us to actually access the nest. Um, and make sure that we don't disturb the eagles because we don't want to be uh, doing anything near that nest when the eagles are in the area because uh, we don't want to uh, in any way uh, possibly uh, discourage them from nesting at, on the site. Which brings up an interesting point, if I can just follow up. It's good to remember that the nest is here at St. Patrick's County Park and is surrounded by all kinds of park activities. So I think a camera would also pick up conversations of, or a, a microphone would also pick up conversations of people walking or the researchers chatting. So it'd be a little bit distracting probably at certain times of the year. Um, do, the question about has it always been the same pair of adults? Well, again, we don't know because they're not banded. We do know that traditionally it's a female that brings a mate back, usually because they pair bond for life. She'll bring her same mate back to the nest that she's bonded with. And if she loses her mate, she will seek out a different male and bring him back to the nest that she is familiar with, her familiar nest. So um, that's what's tradition, but we don't know for sure here at St. Patrick's County Park if it's the same adults or not. Evie, um... We have a question here uh, about uh, whether male and female de uh, uh, eagles develop a brood patch uh, via hormone. Is that driven by hormones or strictly through behavior and plucking? And um, uh, I do not know that. So I will. That's a great question and actually maybe a little bit more technical than I can answer, but it is actually in, in different birds, they will do that different ways. So that's a, a very perceptive question. Literally, some birds pluck out their um, fluffy feathers. But that in and of itself is hormone driven as the eggs are being produced, the adults kind of uh, drive up that uh, chemical reaction in their body to enhance that brood patch and make it engorged with blood vessels. So, I, you know, the interesting thing is, and, and a biologist would have a better answer to this than I would, but the interesting thing is we haven't ever really seen plucked feathers around. You don't really see them in the nest. You don't actually see them around the nest. So uh, I, I'm actually not sure. It's a great question. And I'm going to look that one up, see if I can find the answer at some point. Well, I think that's about all the time we have. Um, and uh, I think we, we addressed most of the questions. Um, Evie, is there anything you'd like to say uh, before we sign off? We certainly are very, very appreciative that uh, many of you are interested in bald eagles and the live eagle cam that is uh, sponsored in essence by the University of Notre Dame and the Environmental Change Initiative is the best way to see the birds. The Bald Eagle Protection Act does require us to limit activity near the nest. And so we really encourage everybody to check out the views way better on the Eagle Cam than it is uh, actually in person out here at St. Patrick's County Park. So check that out. Well, great. And yeah, I just want to say, you know, stay tuned um, to both the, the, the County Parks um, Facebook account um, the Notre Dame Environmental Change Initiative's Facebook account, as well as the ND Leaf Twitter feed, uh, for more information about uh, programs at uh, ND Leaf and St. Joseph County Park uh, this coming summer, and possibly another um, uh, a virtual uh, program at some point. So, um, yeah, I'd like to thank everyone for signing in. I hope you all enjoyed it. Uh, it was fun. So uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.